Hey crew, it's Pitt, and I'm back with some more MBTI. <clears throat> Today we're going to be diving back into our extroverts, and this is the ESFP, Extroverted Sensing, Feeling, Perceiving. Let's dig in. The ESFP is going to love and do without even thinking about it, collecting all the things. They are going to be, ooh, look at this shiny, ooh, look at that shiny. They are easily distracted by all the things, especially so because they are dealing with their feelings. They are responsible for how they feel. So they are getting the new experiences and feeling great about it. Uh, the third eye, what they are going to look forward with and get defensive over for the ESFP is going to be TE, which is everyone else's thoughts and the rationale of the tribe. And for the alternate, that is going to be NI, which is the best possibility and guidance. It is seeing forward uh, to the best possibility. The throat will be where you miscommunicate things, and for the ESFP, that is going to be NI. That's going to be the best possibility and guidance. <clears throat> and for the alternate, that is going to be TE, others' thoughts and rationale. The heart slot, what you really want to do, is SI, organize things. It is what has happened in the past. It is um, recording what has happened. <clears throat> The solar plexus, what really feeds you, man, gives you the nourishment that you need to succeed in life. And it's going to be FE. This is going to be going in accordance with the ethics of the tribe. It is making sure that people feel good about things going forward. Uh, the sacral, the thing that you miss, the, the, you intentionally choose, it trips you up. This is trickster energy. So, like, you think you're doing a good thing, but you're actually doing a bad thing. And for the ESFP, that is going to be your logic. That is going to be what you think. You're going to get tripped up by your own thoughts. You are intentionally choosing the wrong logic to go with. And for the alternate, that is going to be seeing the possibilities. Seeing what could happen from this decision. Having foresight. And the base, which is what you just unintentionally get wrong. Um, for the ESFP, is going to be NE which is the future possibilities and foresight and seeing all the cho choices. And for the alternate, that is going to be TI or their own logic. <clears throat> all right, so now that we've got that, uh, we know where the stack is. We know what the different functions are inside of the stack. How do we integrate that? How do we make that part of us? Because I want to feel good about this. So tell me about it, Pitt. All right. So in order to integrate, you always want to start at the base because that is where you're going to be lacking the most. It is going to be the part that you are unintentionally using in the absolute worst way possible. And so you need to get control of that. You need to make sure that you're praying and meditating. You make sure that you're spending the time to figure out where the problems in these functions lie. And for an ESFP, you're going to need to make sure that you are looking at actual options and not just overlooking options. You have a tendency to do that. You have a tendency to say, oh, I think that this is what's going to happen, even though you don't really see that very well, and you go with that. You don't even bother worrying about the other possible income outcomes. Incomes. Hmm, that's interesting. And so you need to, uh, to stop and consider other possibilities. You have a tendency to jump on the possibility. You like the new experience. It makes you feel good. Other people have told you that it's a great thing. <laughs> and you decide it's the best option. S-E-F-I-T-E-N-I. -E -E and then you're wrong. <laughs> Not all the time because your S-E is really good at finding new experiences. And your F-I is really good about feeling good about them. But you have a tendency to overlook other options. Uh, this can be personal with your work or relationship life. It could be... Uh, professionally, you know, it could be you overlooking possibilities and you have a tendency to get in a bind behind doing that. Uh, you're not seeing, okay, well, if I spend the money on this to have this new experience and feel really good about it, I won't have the money for this, paying this bill that I really need to. Uh, and so you need to stop before you jump into the experiences to make sure what the possible outcomes could be. Spend some time and look at where in your life you have already missed the opportunities. Not necessarily for an experience, but more for what the possible outcomes would have been from having that experience. You're really good at getting the experience. 
you're not so good at figuring out what the consequences of that experience might be. Uh, there's a tendency in the divine and in the base to get overpowered. There's a lot of information that comes in in those two spots. And it gets filtered towards the middle both ways. The base by itself, well, unintentionally, will hold you back. You, you will just miss it. Now, that's not, like, it, it's, you're just not seeing the possible consequence. So you need to take time to see the possible consequence there. For TI, on the alternate, that is going to be your personal thoughts and logic. So you're just not considering the yes-no questions at all. Uh, or if you are, you're choosing the wrong side of it, but it's less of a choice there. It's more of a, you are seeing the possibilities, right? But you're just seeing the bad ones. Because that's what the SE, the NE sacral is going to do to you. Uh, that's where you're going to get tripped up and you're intentionally choosing the wrong thing. And for you, that's the possibilities. So you're seeing some possibilities. You're just not seeing all of them. And the ones that you do see, you tend to choose the wrong one. And, well, this one gives me a good experience and I feel good about it. So I'm going to go with it. You need to slow down and do your yes, no checks. Is this a good idea? Am I going to benefit from this? Will this improve my life? Is this going to hurt someone else? Is this going to make someone else feel bad? Uh, these yes, no questions are important for everything that you do, especially for you because you have a tendency to overlook the logic of the situation. You have a tendency to not see the correct possibilities and to not choose the correct possibilities. And so you need to take time to consider whether or not you are making a logical decision when you make a decision. Is this actually the best way going forward? Do your yes, no checks. That's going to help y'all the most. But next up is the things that you're intentionally choosing to do wrong. And when I say intentionally choosing, it's not like you are consciously saying, hey, I'm going to do this wrong. You're going to get the two options and then you're going to naturally tend towards picking the wrong one of those two options because it's more fun, right? Now, somebody else with a different stack would be, they would choose the wrong options because it's, uh, the, the organization is wrong or other people have told them different but for you you do it because it's fun it's a great experience and it makes you feel good it aligns with your morals but it makes you feel good if, if i is morals it is but it is also feelings it is your feelings it is how you have felt and from your experiences you have found that you will feel good if you do the new things well it's not always a good idea to do the new things and you have a tendency to choose to do the wrong ones, right? You see, you don't see the possibilities coming out of it because you're in any base. And so you just log illogically logic check and say, okay, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's go parasailing with no parasail, right? Let's go jump out of a plane with no parachute. And that is, of course, hyperbole. Nobody really does that extreme, but it is that type of decision. You're like... This seems like a great idea on the surface. It is going to be a fun experience to go and eat eight tabs of whatever, right? But you might die. and <laughs> It might be laced with something. You don't really know where it came from, but it's a new experience. I've never done this before. Let's eat as much of it as we possibly can, right? That's the energy that we're dealing with here. It's not, well, I, I'm going to do this because it's a bad decision, but you're making the bad decision based on the, the knowledge that you have simply because it makes you feel good. And so you need to slow that down. You need to logic check that. You need to say, okay, am I just doing this because it makes me feel good? Am I just doing this because it is a new experience? And while it is good to have new experiences, absolutely. And while it is absolutely imperative to feel good, those two things aren't necessarily what you need to base your decisions on. You need to look forward. You need to look at the possibilities you've already worked on your base look at these possibilities and be like okay what are the likely outcomes of these possibilities okay do i want those outcomes in my life is this something that i actually want do i really need to go to another rave i've been to 14 this month <laughs> no you don't more than likely i'm never going to tell you not to do anything because you are a sovereign being just like i am a sovereign being so it is not up to me to, to tell you absolutely what to do. Uh, but you do need to stop and logic check. If you want to grow, if you want to be healthy in your stack, 
logic checking is a necessary thing especially for you because it is so low you don't do it easily you don't want to you really don't you want to just do what feels good to do do what feels good but first make sure that it is something valuable to your life there are plenty of good experiences that feel good that bring value to your life so find those for the alternate that is going to be the possibilities right you are intentionally choosing the wrong possibilities you see these and you're like oh it's going to be this one well it's not going to be this one but you're going to get defensive over it because you chose it and it's not really the best choice it's not really even something that is likely to happen <laughs> well you say okay let's say i'm a little bit late for work today right i'm running late on the interstate i'm stuck in traffic there's a wreck my boss is going to fire me i'm going to go home and i'm going to lose my house that is the choices that you're seeing well your boss knows that there was a wreck hopefully he's not a dick right and he's like okay there's a little leeway here as long as they're not a dick and for the most part people are willing to work around as long as you don't make a habit about being late every single day then they're not going to fire you for being five minutes late or ten minutes late because there was a wreck on the interstate. You can be stuck in traffic for an extremely long time. We know that here in Louisiana. And so you need to stop and consider whether these possibilities that you are looking at and you're seeing, because you, you're seeing some possibilities where the any, any base doesn't really see the possibilities. You're seeing them. You're just seeing the wrong ones. And so when you're doing your logic checks against that, you need to say, okay, is this likely to happen? Is this likely to be the outcome? And that goes farther in the stack to the NI. But you can start logic checking the options you see now. And that will help you determine what the other options might be. So if you're like, okay, well, it's not likely that he's going to fire me for being five minutes late because there was a wreck on the interstate. But I might have to work a little bit later today. That is a possibility that could come from that. That is not necessarily the worst one or the wrong one. <laughs> or you might be stuck in traffic and you're thinking, they're going to fire me. So you walk into the office and quit. So they don't fire you. So you feel good about having to get a new experience from this. Stop doing that too. Like that is literally choosing the wrong choice. Your boss was going to be okay with you being five minutes late. But you work yourself up into such a lather about, oh my God, they're going to fire me. They're going to fire me. I'm going to feel terrible. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose my car. I'm going to get ahead of it. I'm going to do it for them. Don't do that. Slow down and consider these possibilities. Logic check the, the likelihood of that being the possibility. And then look for the other options. That's going to help you greatly. Um, slowing down on your options is going to help you more than anything, really. The solar plexus, this is what feeds you, right? This is what nourishes your soul. And that for you is feeling of others. It is what other people feel. It is giving a good feeling to others. Now, it's a little bit weird because you care very much about yours, right? And you care very much about the getting the new things. But you're an E. You're for the tribe. And in order to really nourish yourself you need to get these experiences and decide whether they feel good or in the end if they're moral and then pass them on to the tribe you're naturally inclined to do that you are a tribe centered person that is what e means and so you want to give them the good experience so do that quit holding on to it quit being about you there's a lot of selfishness that can be tied up in this because the FI crown is what you feel responsible for, and that is you feeling good, you being moral. Well, part of that is helping the tribe to correct their ethics. It is giving the tribe a good feeling about the things that they are doing as long as they are aligned in the right way. And so you're really good at getting these new experiences and knowing which ones are the good ones. Give that to the tribe. Expand your tribe a little bit. You're going to have a tendency to hold back on your tribe. This is low in your base, so you're not going to f want everyone to necessarily feel good. Even though that will really feel, feed you, you're not going to be naturally inclined for that. So you need to seize the opportunities to make other people feel good. That will feed your soul. You're going to be like, man, that was 
awesome. That was a great experience. I feel good from that. And that's going to create a positive cycle for you. If you can actually give other people the pleasant experience that you get from your experiences, you're going to be nourished by that. And that's going to bring us into the heart, right? The heart is what you really long to do. And what you long to do is to give people the best thing, right? You're tribe focused, so you are about giving things. And you get all of these experiences. You really want to give the tribe the best one and make them feel good. But that's hidden in the middle part of your stack. So you don't get a lot of energy there. You have to be intentional about it. You have to stop and decide which were the best experiences. Because that's what SI is all about. It is taking all of these experiences, SE, and then narrowing them down into the one good experience. The E's gather, the I's sort. It's about organization. So the SI is taking the, the great experiences and figuring out which one was best. Well, we went to the mountains, we went to the beach, and we went fishing on the river. And I had the most fun at the beach. So I'm going to share that with the tribe and be like, hey, we should all go to the beach. That is where you fit your bill. And when you're doing that and you're like, this is the best experience that I've ever had. It made me feel great. It will probably make you feel good too. That's going to create your positive cycle. That's going to make you feel really good about finding the experiences for people. Uh, so find something where you're doing that. You know, a good spot for this is travel agents, right? You're taking the experiences of these places, especially if you've been there, but even if you've just learned about them and filtering them into which one is the best option for these people and then making them feel good from that. So as a travel agent, you're gonna feel great. You're gonna be good for uh, finding new venues for a band or new bands for a venue so that you're bringing in a new experience that made you feel good that makes other people feel good and helps find the best thing um, that's the type of energy that you're wanting to be looking for in a professional manner is how can i take my experiences and narrow them down to the best one for this person now you're focused on the tribe but it Sometimes the tribe can be narrowed down to the one person at a time, right? You're trying to make this person feel good. He is external. He is the tribe. She is the tribe, whatever. I don't care about all that. But your purpose is to make them feel good, to choose, help them choose for themselves because you really don't want to choose it for them. But you want to help them know that this was the best experience out of the experiences and that they are really looking for this. That's going to bring us into the throat. The throat is what you miscommunicate. This right here is, you don't get a lot of energy right there. It's like a 20% reception right here, like 20 to 30%, and it's it, you don't get a lot of information. It comes in from the top, and it filters down towards the middle, and it comes in from the bottom, it filters up towards the middle. So the middle two slots get a very little bit of information. And so you miscommunicate this. You need to stop and take the time. The ESFP is going to be NI. That is going to be choosing the best path. That is going to be choosing what is the most likely thing to happen. You are taking all of the ideas that other people have to give to you because it is the bottom of your stack and choosing what is the best idea. Well, you don't have a lot of information right there, right? It's coming from the bottom of your stack, so it's overpowering you. And your NI is not getting a lot of information so you're not really choosing the best idea you're fairly decent at getting the best thing but not as much getting the best idea even though they're right close and they get the same reception but your se in the divine slot that you do without even really thinking about it is going to help your ni work better than your si but you just tend to overlook these things. You tend to not pay as much attention to it. So you go along with whatever your child slot is here. And you're like, for you, that's going to be the TENI relationship. And that's going to be other people think that this is the best idea. I'm going to go with it. You're not really going to question it all that much. Um, because you don't get a lot of information right there. You're more worried about the new things and feeling good than about learning some new idea. What do I care about carbon emissions? What do I care about uh, 
veganism or eating cockroaches. What do I care about that? I don't care about those ideas. That's that, that's not an experience that I'm I'm dealing with right now. So you need to take the time to consider these ideas. You need to look at the ideas, which you're already doing in your base, right? You've got that lined out. Now you need to take those and figure out which ones are the best ones for you, not for the tribe. You are naturally intending to go with the tribe for what they feel is the best rationale. You need to sometimes break from that. I'm not telling you to break from that all the time because sometimes the tribe is right, but sometimes the tribe is wrong. You're going to have a tendency to get defensive over it, uh, whatever the tribe thinks. So you need to really know where you stand on that. Understand what their rationale is, but understand where your logic lies with it too. You've already worked on that. And start choosing the best idea for you. It may not be what the best idea for what you thought your tribe was. That may not be for you. Your tribe may not really fit you. It may be you just went along to get along and you fell in with this tribe and they made you feel accepted so you felt good and they brought you new experiences so you felt good so you just went along with what they thought even though you really don't like it. You really don't want to do these things. Now, that can work in the opposite way too. You could be with a group of people who really do what you want to do and that's going to feed you. So you need to start choosing the best ideas and one of the ways that you can do that is by narrowing your tribe. Now, I'm always telling you to pull more people into your tribe to get more options and more opinions, but sometimes the tribe can be a little bit toxic and you just need to make sure that you're not with the toxic tribe. You have a tendency to do that because they're very good about giving you affirmations like the toxic tribe, and I'm not going to specify which one it is, but you know who I'm talking about. The toxic tribe is really good for giving you affirmations if you are playing along. But if you are not playing along, they are very mean, right? They're very toxic, and it happens immediately. You look at what they just did to Elon Musk. Uh, and so what you need to do is to narrow down the possibilities. The alternate, you are going to, you are going to get very, or you're going to overlook the tribe's rationale. You're not going to pay attention to what other people think, right? You are tribe centered. So you're wanting to get the experiences and give them to the tribe because they make you feel good, but you are going to be more reserved. You're going to be, uh, this is the direct side, right? The, the ESFP is the informative and the alternate is the direct and you're trying to hold more energy back for yourself and that energy is what you feel is the best choice so you don't really care as much what the tribe thinks well you need to start paying attention to the tribe sometimes the tribe is right sometimes the tribe is wrong but more often the tribe is right now it may not be the vocal part of the tribe that you need to listen to but you do need to listen to the tribe uh, you need to pull in more opinions, more thoughts, because you have a tendency to overlook them, and you don't logic check them because it's in your base. Well, now you're working on your base, and you've worked your way up through the stack, and now you need to actually expand your tribe to figure out what other people are thinking, too, because they have valid thoughts. They may not be practical thoughts. They may not be something that can actually be implemented, but they have valid reasons for thinking that, and you need to listen to that. You need to logic check those. You need to look at the possibilities. You need to see how other people feel and whether it is ethical. Check it back against your morals because you are good with morals. And so once you do all of that, you can take in more of the tribe's thoughts. You can pull in some more of these possibilities and choose better ones. Which is going to bring us into the third eye. The third eye is the child slide. This is where you get defensive. Now, defensiveness can go in two ways, right? Either for the ESFP, the tribe is absolutely right, or the tribe is absolutely wrong. And you are going to push back against that vehemently. You're going to be like, no, or yes, and then you are all in. Well, you need to slack off on that a little bit. 
there's a good chance as an ESFP that you're choosing the wrong tribe. We went through that, right? You're not making the best possibilities. You're not choosing the right things. Oh, and that is not for everyone. It is never for everyone, just so we're clear. But as a tendency, as a type, you you tend to choose the wrong crowd. You very much want to please the crowd, but you want them to please you. And they're good at pleasing you as long as you tell them the right thing. You need to understand what their rationale is first, and then you can push back against it. It's okay to be a little bit defensive over that because sometimes the tribe is wrong, but sometimes you're wrong too. Sometimes your logic is not functioning correctly and you're missing possibilities. Well, the tribe can bring you that. They can bolster you in that. They can help you to develop that. And so the more people and the more opinions you can bring in and consider, not just blindly go along with, but actually consider and take the time to see the, the possibilities and to logic check it, the more the better. The more different viewpoints that you can have, the better. The more possibilities that are brought to you, the better for you because you tend to miss them. And part of that is pushing back against the tribe. This person said something that I think might be homophobic. I am never going to talk to them ever again. That is not healthy. I'm not telling you to freely associate with anybody who is intentionally harmful. If they are being mean or vicious or talking or whatever. But thinking that the nuclear family is a good idea is not homophobia. And you need to look at it in that light. And that is an extreme case, of course, because extreme cases get the point across. But there are thousands of variations of thousands of possibilities of the tribe actually being right and you pushing back against that in a not healthy manner. Now, if the tribe is wrong, you are very good and not going along with it. You stand in your morals. That is what you feel responsible for. Yes. It is impossible to feel good if you are violating your own morals. And so you won't violate your own morals. Now, you may choose the wrong ones because you're not looking at the possibilities and you're not checking it back against the tribe and you're not logic checking it with yourself. And so you might choose morals that other people might not agree with. But that doesn't mean that they're wrong necessarily, but they may not align with what you want to do. And so you need to look at that. Um, and take in more people's thoughts. For the third eye on the alternate, that is going to be the NI, that is choosing the best possibility. You are going to get very defensive over the choices that you make. Well, you're, you're probably making the wrong choices. I hate to keep hammering that, but it, it's true because you rely so much on the feelings. You know, it's, it's, it's a truth that facts don't care about your feelings. And I don't say that to be mean, even though that probably just triggered somebody, but facts are facts. Things happen or they don't. Now, feelings are subjective. What actually is, is not. You can feel this way and be wrong. And yet, if I drop a pin, it's still gonna hit the ground. You can feel that I'm wrong about that, but it's still gonna happen. You're going to have a hard time choosing the best possibility because you're not getting the best options. As a matter of fact, you're choosing the wrong options. And that's because your logic is not existent. Like you're really not logic checking things. And you're not checking them back against the tribe and their ethics. Your morals can be different from your own alignment because you don't check it back against the tribe. And so... Because you're getting the least amount of options possible and choosing the wrong ones, you're not choosing the best possibility for you. So strengthening the rest of your stack is going to absolutely help with that. It's going to bolster that up and it's going to reinforce that. And so you will be able to make correct choices. And when you're logic checking and you're checking back against the tribe and you know that this is the best choice, then it's okay to be defensive about that best choice. And you're really good at that. If somebody pushing back against what you feel is the best choice 
you go into rage fit. You're like, no! Especially if you think that it's going to make you feel bad. Uh, or it's going to limit your experiences. And so you're going to push back against that. You need to be very intentional about whether that actually aligns with you. I'm not going to tell you what choices to make. That is not my job. My job is to help give you the tools to help enable you to change what you want to change about you, right? You probably want to change this about yourself. You know that you're not always making the most logical choices. And working through your logic and yes, no, checking all of your choices, I know it gets tedious, but it is necessary. And so once you can do that, once you can get the logic choices, and once you can bounce it back against the tribe a couple times, then it's okay to get defensive over it. Like once you know that it is actually aligned with your best intention for whatever your purpose may be, and it aligns with your morals, whatever they may be, you can get defensive over it. Now, I'm not telling you to get aggressive over it. I will never tell you to aggress on anyone. But it is okay to stand where you want to stand. It absolutely is. That's going to bring us into the easy part, right? Now we're into the divine and the crown. These are things that you do without thinking about them, for the most part. It's a 90% reception rate and a 70% reception rate on the information. So you're getting a lot of information, and it can be overpowering. So you have a tendency. Oh, well, let's get to that in a second. You're going to be responsible for the morals, right? For your morals. So you are going to stand very firm in your morals. And for the most part, you are right. That is a 70 plus reception rate. So you are right in where your morals lie for you most of the time. But where your inconsistencies lie, you are going to get bit in the ass. I've used the example before, but say that you are Wiccan. And I understand that Wicca is widely diverse and there are a lot of different practitioners practices about it but for the most part all of them consider life sacred they all consider life a gift from the divine whether you believe that is the the horned god and the the mother or if you believe that is the earth or you believe that is the one or whatever you believe you believe that life is sacred well it is not morally consistent to be pro-abortion if you stand for life is divine it's not logically consistent I understand that there are exceptions. I'm not making the argument. I'm saying logic checking it back against yourself, you will see that you are wrong on that. There are a multitude of less, less noticeable examples of that. But when you miss that 20 to 30% right there, it really hurts you. Oh, simply because you feel bad about choosing the wrong things and you want to feel good. You are responsible for making sure that you feel good. You do that by giving the tribe things, but you feel responsible for you feeling good. And so you just need to make sure that where you stand on your morals are logically consistent with where you want to stand in your morals. I'm not going to tell you to change your morals. I'm not going to tell you to align your morals with mine. I am telling you that you need to make sure that where you stand is where you want to to stand and it's that simple that's going to bring us into the divine now the divine can be overpowering you are getting a lot of information here that is 90 to 100 percent reception and so it can be overpowering you can get stuck in i need the new experience now i can't settle on doing this one thing for five ten years i can't do that i can't do it for two years I, ha I can do it for maybe six months, and then I need a new job. I can do this for a couple of weeks, and then I need a new thing. You're going to have a tendency to get stuck into that habit. I want the new thing. It's going to make me feel good if I get a new computer. It's going to make me feel good if I get a new car. It's going to make me feel good if I get a new partner. It's going to make me feel good if I get a new whatever it happens to be. Well, here's the thing. Things don't make you feel good. They don't. Yeah, it is nice to have things. It really is. But what really makes you feel good is other people. That's what really feeds you. And so you need to find the things. Like, by all means, you love doing that. That makes you feel good. And so 
find the things and give them to the tribe. That is your evolutionary purpose. For real. Like, you're good at finding the entertainment. S-E-F-I. Find what makes me feel good. Give it to the tribe. That is S-E-F-I. And so, find the things, understand that it makes you feel good, and give it to the tribe. Um, and just take the time to make sure that you are actually finding all the things, and that you are completing the things. That's another thing that ESFPs are good for. <laughs> and that sounded a little bit weird, but I don't ever mean it to be like, you're good for this, right? But you're really good at finding things and completing things and doing tasks that require physical manipulation. You're good sports people, right? You like to entertain people because it makes you feel good. And you're really blessed with physicality. You're good at putting your hands on things and manipulating them. You're good at physically completing jobs and building things. You like the new experience of going from this house to this house to this house doing construction. You like going from this place to this place to this place testing food in restaurants. You're really good at the f getting the new experiences and then filtering them through how it makes you feel. So what you need to do professionally is that you need to find new experiences and then filter them through you. Does this make me feel good? Does it not? If it does, how can I share this with other people? If it doesn't, how can I stop other people from experiencing it? And that is really where you're going to find your true fulfillment in it. As far as relationships, as with a partner, what you are going to be looking for is what everybody else is looking for too. You need to figure out the sacral, which is T-I-N-N-E, -N -N -E, and find someone who has that same in the top four. Right? So for an ESFP, you need somebody with divine crown, third eye, or throat to be TI. And for the alternate, you need a divine crown, third eye, or throat to be NE. And then it is even better, but not necessary, if they have that in the third eye slot. Because that is a direct correlation. That is a direct support function for what you are weak in. You are weak in TI. If you find someone who has a TI, third eye, they are defensive over the TI. So you two can correct each other. You will be bringing them the TE that you're defensive over to test their TI. And they will be taking their TI that they're defensive over to test your TE. And that way you can logic check each other using T. And like, I'm never going to tell you that you can only be with this one particular type. I'm not ever going to tell you that you're a special snowflake because of your type. Type does, it, it tells you how you get information in, how you filter that information, and how you give it back. It helps you to see what you oversee to help develop you as a person in the way that you want to be developed. Because my goal here is to help you change you in the way you want to be changed. I'm not here to tell you what to change. I'm to here to help you have the tools to change yourself. Hopefully, I brought a little bit of enlightenment and not too much confusion to a not too difficult to topic. If you are familiar with the basics, this is really easy to, to start integrating. If you're not familiar with the basics, there will be a thingy right up here. You drop down, go to the playlist that says Infinite Integrations. Start from the beginning. Understand the basics. Because it will help you to, once you can understand where the definitions lie and what they mean, you will get a great experience out of learning this. Because it will make you feel good to finally understand why you are missing possibilities. To finally understand why your logic's not working right. And because you feel good about it, you'll be able to give that experience and feel great about it. Hopefully I helped with that just a little tiny bit. To the crew. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate every single minute that you are here with me. And I am praying for you every single day. Until next time, I love you. This has been Pitt. Peace.